Hey guys, my name is Mel and welcome to my channel Refurb with NG. Now I'm no professional by any means, I really do just enjoy upcycling furniture. So look, there might be better ways to do some things and if you have any suggestions, I'm open to hear it, so shoot them through. Today I'm going to show you how we get to this end product here. It's a relatively simple upcycle. I did hit a few snags along the way, so you'll see that and um, find out what you need to do if, if you encounter those problems yourself. You may have noticed I've been a little MIA lately, which is definitely true. We found out that um, we we're pregnant, we're having our first little bubba, which is really exciting. So I had to put a little bit of a pause on the recycling. I was a bit sick to start with. So, um, but now I've got a lot more energy and I've been sort of getting back into my normal routine. So I was able to get this one done. This one here was given to me by a friend and look, it's the perfect piece um, to use at the change table. So we're keeping it for our nursery. Uh, so if you want to watch along and see how we get here, stay tuned. And if you enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. So I've decided I want to strip these drawers. And for that, I'm going to try the oven cleaner method. I haven't done it before. And look, it's all the rage these days. Uh, I know it is a chemical. So look, just be careful. Make sure you are taking precautions. I'm going to be wearing a face mask and gloves and some glasses for that reason and my space is really well ventilated as you can see so just make sure you are in an area where it is well ventilated so look i'm going to just spray it on let it sit and see how it comes up and i will show you the result All right, so this is what she looks like after um, we've taken all the oven cleaner off. So to get it off, I just used a plastic scraper. I did re-wet the surface and just let it sit for about 30 seconds before I went in and it scraped off super, super easy. It is a very messy process. So look, make sure you've got something covering your floors unless you've got a nice open outdoor space like me that you don't mind messing up because it is messy. Uh, once I scraped everything down, I went back in with just your normal household green scrubbing and a bucket of water and just tried to get it as even as I could try and get some of the patches out and just get all the excess off because there was lots of little bits of debris left behind. So that's why it's pretty patchy because it's all wet and just drying at the moment. Tops the first part that's sort of drying now. You can see that there's quite a lot of a light um, wood showing through, but there's also some really dark stuff as well. So we'll just have to wait and see what it looks like when it's completely dry and go from there. And look, I just did it for those of you who are curious. I've never used the oven cleaner method before. So I just did it just to try it like I'm sure most of you will after this, if you haven't already. Um, I did find it a lot easier than paint stripper and look, paint stripper, when I get it on me, it burns like hell, whereas this wasn't too bad but you still definitely have to take those precautions and wet your face coverings, eye, some coverings for your eyes and um, some gloves as well. So like I said, we just gotta wait and see what it looks like when it fully dries. So join me back here in a moment and um, we'll check her out once it's dry. Right, oh, this is what she looks like after she's fully dry. So you can see it's come up actually really quite good. Now to get it a little bit more even and smooth, I'm gonna go over the whole thing with a sander. So I've just got a Makita sander, an orbital sander, and I'm using um, just a 120 grit because it's pretty good. So I'm going over the whole piece, getting it all nice and even and smooth. And then from there, I'll sort of assess and see where I wanna go from there.
So next up, I'm just gonna bleach the piece as well, just to see if I can get a bit lighter. So I'm just mixing some household bleach with some water, just a 50-50 mix, and just using a standard paintbrush to apply it. So I'm gonna probably do one or two coats, let it dry and see how it comes up. So this is how it's come up, it's pretty light. This is after two coats of the bleach. So it's a little bit patchy, but that's okay. It kind of goes with the grain. Done the same all the way around and also to the drawers, which are just back here. So next up, I've just got to clean it all off. And for that, I'm just using a mix of vinegar and water just to make sure that there's no residue of the bleach left behind. So it's all clean and dried now and I'm just going in with a whitewash. So I'm just using the Canterbury Blue Fresh White chalk paint that I always use and mix that with some water. Now you just mix whatever you want really. You just want it to be nice, thin and watery so that when you apply it, it's like a translucent white that you're putting on the piece. So you might fiddle with that a little bit until you get the consistency that you like. Once you're happy, just pop your brush in and get painting. So you're gonna apply it all over, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then you go back in with a damp rag and rub it off. So the pressure that you apply as you're rubbing it off will determine how much is left behind. So don't worry if you rub off too much to start with, you can just pop some more paint back on and rub it off a little bit more gently the next time. So I'm just going over the whole piece, including the drawers with this whitewash and we'll let it dry and see how it comes up. Right, so it's all dry now. I'm gonna go in with a very fine sanding block and just give it a sand all over to just try and smooth it out a little bit and make the whitewash look a little bit more even. It did come up a little bit patchy on the sides, but look, I'm gonna be able to work with that, so that's okay. And then once I've given it a good sand, I've just grabbed a microfiber cloth and going over the whole piece just to pick up all the dust. All right, so next up, I'm gonna go over the whole piece in some Cabot's Clear. So I'm just using the water-based version. And the plan is, after that is all dry, I'm gonna go over it with some white wax. And what that'll do is help just even up some of the patches a little bit. Um, I'm not too fussed, it kinda just makes it look a little bit more rustic. But if you are concerned, it's just a way that you can sort of work with it and even it up. Uh, you don't have to do this step here, the wax will seal it but I just wanted that just extra durability. So I'm going over just in one coat with this clear, Cabot's Clear, and then once that's dry, I'll do a white wax finish on the top. All 
All right, so I've popped the drawers back in and the handles on, and I think it's come up really, really nicely. I was gonna change the handles to kind of suit a little bit more of a coastal look, but I decided to clean them just for fun and they've just come up so nice. I just don't wanna, don't wanna waste them. So I've popped them back on. I might change them down the track, but for now they are on there. So they look great. One thing I wanted to show you though is something that doesn't look so great and it is this discoloration. So some discoloration just on the back part at the top and just on this side down the side. So look, it could be a couple of things. It could be the tenons um, coming through, um, like bleed through what we call, or it could just be lack of preparation in regards to cleaning. So I'm fairly new to this. I'm not really sure which way it is, but given that the rest of the pieces come up pretty good, I'm thinking I might not have just cleaned the side and the top as thoroughly. Now we just remember we've gone through this whole piece with some oven cleaner. I then bleached it. I've then cleaned it with some water and vinegar and then some normal water. So given that I've put so much stuff on it, it just might have pulled a little bit back there and I might not have just cleaned it just as thorough as thoroughly as I needed to to get it fully ready for the whitewash. So look, we've all fallen victim of this. We've all done something that we thought, oh, maybe I should do this or I'm in a bit of a hurry and skip these steps, but this is why you do, you should not do that. Okay. So prep, 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 that is key. It's going to avoid you having to redo stuff and just waste time that you don't need to. Now this piece here, look, it's just going to be kept by myself. So I'm not selling it. doesn't need to be amazingly perfect, but just for the purpose of showing you guys, what do you do? Um, we're going to video, I'm going to video it and just take you through as I try and rectify it. Um, if you were selling it to a customer and you, you, you do this for a living, um, then you, you can imagine how much time you waste and eat up having to redo everything. So look, that's why it's important to take that little bit of extra time at the start to prep your piece as well as you can so that you avoid all of this. I just do this for a hobby. It's just for fun. And like I said, this piece is just go going in my own home. So it's no big deal. Um, but I just wanted to record it to show you, look, it's not always perfect. And, and exactly how can we fix this? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with that I didn't clean it properly. Um, again, like I said, may or may not be correct, but I'm going to sand this all back. Okay, it's just a whitewash and, and some clear coat that I've put on here, so it should come off pretty easy. Once I've sanded that all back, I'll make sure I, I just give it another proper clean. I'm going to let it sit for a whole day, let it dry completely, and maybe just go over it again before I go back in with the whitewash. And hopefully that rectifies the issue, and we'll see that in just a few clips time when we get to that point. But, um, but yeah, so... I just wanted to show you guys that it's not always perfect. It's frustrating sometimes and it can take way longer than you anticipate, but it's totally worth it in the end because look how great it looks otherwise. All right, team, let's, let's start sanding. All right, so it took what felt like forever, but I've sanded down the sides and the side and the top. So the rest of it is gonna be fine. I'm just gonna clean that off and um, we can go back in with our whitewash. And I just wanna show you, I just tried a little bit of white wax down the bottom of the rest of the piece and it actually come up pretty good. So I'm gonna go over the whole piece in some white wax in just a moment, um, other than obviously the areas I've just sanded, but I'll do the drawers and the frame and everything else will be ready to go. I just need to do those last two bits and we'll be done.
so next up I'm going to line all the insides of the drawers, just this section here. Um, I just think it'll tie the piece together really nicely and just make it look complete. I'm going to be using some of this adhesive wallpaper and it's a beautiful neutral sort of palm pattern. I don't know if you can see that there. This is a 10 meter roll and it was only 35 bucks from Kmart. So they've got a neat little craft section there um, if you haven't checked it out already. And they had heaps of other patterns. So really good range to choose from um, just in your local Kmart. So for that, to get it in place, all I'm doing is just measuring it to size and I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut it. So it's nice and straight, nice and neat. Probably all the drawers are the same size, so I'm just gonna keep this one and use it as my main template. And it looks like it's just peel and stick and you're done. Right, so I decided I want to change up the handles. They're just a little bit too bright and fresh for the, the look that I'm going for. Um, I can't find any handles that are like exactly the right size that I need and I don't want to re-drill any holes. So um, what I'm going to do is put some gilding wax on them. So I've got this um, one here. It is chocolate bronze gilding polish, which I've used before and I really quite like. So I'm just hoping um, to darken it up a little bit so it kind of looks a little bit more rustic rather than we've got the really polished gold against the, the nice soft coastal kind of looking cabinet. Um, so I'm just going to go and um, unscrew all the handles and then I'll show you how we apply the gilding wax. When I put the gilding wax on it, it didn't quite stick. So whatever I cleaned them with must have hung around. So I'm just using some mineral terps to clean them off. And then I'm going to scuff them up a bit with some sandpaper. So I'm just using some 
120 grit. I probably should have used some finer one, but that's okay. I'm going to cover the handles in just a moment, you'll see. That's them there, all clean and roughed up. So the gilding polish, I'm just going to do on the edges of the handles because I've decided the flap in the middle, I'm going to use some twine on it. So you won't see the middle part and hoping this time that the gilding wax actually sticks on. So just watch along and um, I'm just using a small paintbrush and using the lid of the gilding wax container to keep the little bit that I need and just going over the edges. So you can see it's not too much of a change, but it's just deep enough to just take that shine off the handles. And that's all I'm hoping for. So, so far looking good. I'm gonna go through the whole lot and um, just put that gilding wax on the edges and I'll take you with me as I put the twine on as well. So these are the two patterns that I was looking at using for the twine. So I'm gonna go with the top one because I just think it's gonna be a bit easier to do and a little bit less bulky. So just watch along here as I wrap the handle. So I just looked up on YouTube, just some paracord wrapping videos and a lot of people do them on things like tool handles. So it was super easy to sort of just teach myself. Uh, so just grab your string, fold it over um, just at the point where um, your handle ends. So you want a loop, hanging out at one side and then the piece where the string starts it's going to poke out the other end so I'm just using my hands to hold it in place and as you can see I've just got a little loop hanging out on the end and then I'm going to grab the twine that's still connected to the rest of it and I'm just going to grab it and wrap it around so the most important thing here is to just keep it nice and tight as you're wrapping it around um, so you're going to really need to just press down with your other hand keep it in line and these handles worked really good. So the underneath had a little bit of a groove in it so that the, the twine didn't look very bulky. So I'm just going and just checking it out on top as well. So you don't wanna do too loose of a wrap or wrap it too wide. You want it really nice and tight and just keep pressing down as you move along. So I'm just gonna keep going all the way to the end and then you'll see where we go from there. So I'm approaching the end of the handle now and you can see that loop that we left at the start we're going to use that now so I've cut my twine off from the roll and I'm just going to poke the end of it through that loop so you're going to pull it all the way through and then the other end that we've left hanging out from our start point you're just going to give a nice big strong pull on that until that loop is pretty much disappeared and then it's going to start to bring in that excess string so you can pull it halfway down you can pull it all the way through if you like I'm just pulling it halfway down because it's not nice and tight it's not going to go anywhere and um, once you've got it to where you want it you just cut off the end so for that I'm just using some toenail clippers actually I found that was easy to sort of get in there what I need so look there you go it was easy to do and handles look nice and Look, if, if this video helps, great. If not, you can look it up on YouTube. There's lots of great videos on there and even some other cool patterns that you can try. And it's a great way to update some existing handles and it's gonna save you some money too. So I've done a few already and I'm just gonna just show you a couple of more just so you can see how it's done and um, before you give it a crack yourself.
Right, so the handles are all done. So it's a good idea to seal them. It'll just help keep them a little bit cleaner because it'll obviously pick up all the grit off your hands as you continually open and close all the drawers. Um, and it also just makes sure it you know, doesn't fray or anything like that. So to seal these handles, I'm just gonna use a mix of PVA glue and water, um, just a 50-50 kind of mix. Um, I'm just gonna use this plastic cup, uh, mix it up. I've got a small paintbrush that I'm gonna use to paint it on. And look, you wanna fully saturate the rope, um, get it as nice and wet as you can, leave it to dry. And once it's dry, we can pop the handles back on.